afternoon everyone this is uh, shavanti from department of aeronautical engineering so today we are going to see another topic of our first module so that is your wing and tail selection so in the previous class we have seen about the airfoil selection right so what kind of an airfoil i need to select or what are the requirements i am looking when i am selecting a particular airfoil or how do i design it right and what are the different uh, series of uh, uh, family we had right or different naga series we had right so all this we have seen in terms of uh, airfoil so today we will be uh, talking uh, about uh, the wing and about the tail configuration right so coming first to the design lift coefficient right so now in the earliest concepts the designer must frequently rely upon the existing airfoil so, so this is what we have been uh, saying in the previous classes also regarding the when you try to design an aircraft right for a conceptual design of an aircraft i try to approach the historical trends or the previous data right i i take the previous data that is one way or this i try to do uh, something very new right so either my approach is completely new or my approach is completely taken from a historical trends or i'm trying to modulate uh, certain things right so that is how it is so for a for early conceptual design work when it went is in the initial stages then uh, i am going to rely or i am going to rather depend upon the uh, pre existing data only or here it is in terms of pre existing airfoils right now from the existing airfoils whatever the uh, number of airfoils i have i try to select the one which would meet my desired characteristics of the aircraft right correct now uh, my designer has given a uh, designer has given the work to Uh, manufacture a product, or the customer has given a designer to design an aircraft with it. Then he need to have a set of requirements with him, and that need to be fulfilled. Right? Only then I can go and say that yes, whatever the product has been said, that is being delivered exactly in a way. Right? So therefore, the selection of airfoils, whatever the airfoil I am going to select, I have to uh, select in such a way that all those characteristics that I am looking for. need to be there in the particular aircraft or in the particular airfoil that you have chosen for so that it would uh, so that it would fly at the near cl max right so all i want at the end is my cl or my lift coefficient to be a maximum one or a lift to be a maximum one and a drag to be a lesser one and i also expect the stall to be a lesser one here right so we all know that for a level flight for a level flight we know that lift is equal to a W, right, and T is equal to drag, correct. Now next, so here I know that again I know formula for lift that is L is equal to half rho v square S C L. For a steady level flight, we said that L is equal to W, so I'm replacing L by W. W is equal to half rho v square S C L, and from here I can get the C L, right? So my C L is nothing but two W by rho v square S, or I can also bring down. W by S, which is nothing but the wing lowering here, right? And we also know something else that is dynamic pressure. Dynamic pressure is Q, right? Q also can be written in terms of rho and V here. Instead of writing uh, rho and V, uh, we rather try to write in terms of dynamic pressure, right? So then. Coefficient can be calculated for the velocity and altitude of the design mission. We are not specifying density here; rather, we are talking in terms of altitude because I would like to express uh, my aircraft in a uh, altitude rather in terms of a density. Right? So the actual wing loading, my wing loading, wing loading, I have said W by S. Right? W by S coming from here. Wing loading is going to decrease during the mission as your fuel is going to burn during flying or during cruise here. Right? So to stay at the design lift coefficient, the dynamic pressure. Must be reduced during the mission by either slowing it down. So this is the design lift coefficient that has been shown for a conventional airfoil and for a laminar airfoil. For laminar airfoil, we have a bucketed one. All right. So next is the airfoil thickness ratio. Now, when we talk about airfoil thickness ratio, that is designated by T by C here. Okay. So now my thickness ratio is dependent on certain parameters, right? So the thickness ratio has a direct effect on drag, maximum lift, on the stall characteristics, and the structural weight. These are the different parameters where the thickness ratio is going to be effect on, uh, is going to be dependent on, and it is going to have its effect on, right? So drag is going to increase with the thickness ratio, 
due to increased flow separation that means i will have a, a very much of flow that is going to be separated right when the flow is going to be separated uh, after a, over a period of time then we see the drag is going to increase then the thickness ratio it is also going to affect the maximum lift stall characteristics by its effect on the nose shape depending on the shape of the nose i would have a such flow separation or the stall characteristics right all these are going to be affected again in terms of thickness ratio thickness ratio again in turn with the lift to stall or a weight of it right so for a wing of fairly higher aspect ratio and a moderate speed a large nose radius provides a higher stall angle and a greater maximum seal that means if my aspect ratio is very high aspect ratio b square by a is and written by ar we have studied this in aerodynamics right so when i have a higher aspect ratio i would have a not a, a very low sweep or not a very high sweep but a moderate sweep right mm -hmm. and moderate sweep and we are saying a b square by a so therefore i would have a, again a large nose radius which provide a higher stall angle which would give internal a maximum lift coefficient so this is the uh, effect of thickness ratio on the drag right so this we can see here thickness ratio to cd is been plotted here okay then we have aspect ratio okay now aspect ratio is something where a wing does not experience as much as of a loss of lift and increase of drag due to the tip effects okay wing is not experiencing so much of loss of lift here right now here again we have a uh, different types here if my aspect ratio is really high or if my aspect ratio is really very small right so if at all if i have a higher aspect ratio right if i have a aspect ratio which is very high that means i have a very long and skinny wing which has a lesser drag for a given lift right so then in comparison to a shorter or a, a fat wing right so that is your low aspect ratio now as most of the early wings were in rect rectangular shape right so the aspect ratio was initially defined as the span divided by quad so initially when most of the in the previous work we see that uh, this particular wings were the rectangular in shape and it was the aspect ratio was only defined in terms of span and quad now for a tapered wing right if i had a tapered wing then my aspect ratio is defined as the span, the span square divided by the area okay so this uh, this definition goes for a tapered wing and for rectangular uh, wing we see that it is just simply a span divided by quad if a wing is generating a, a when a wing it's not it's not if it's a when a wing is generating a lift it has this theory we you know this theory is where how lift is being produced right so when wing is generating lift it has a reduced pressure on the upper surface right and an increased pressure on the lower surface and the differential pressure of this is going to create a lift right so this theory we all know and the air would like to escape from the bottom of the wing moving to the top right air escaping around the wing tip lowers the pressure difference between the upper and the lower surfaces is reduced with the lift near the tip right now a wing with a higher aspect ratio has tips which are farther apart than an equal area wing with a low aspect ratio then the amount of the wing that is going to be affected by the uh, tip vortex or the vortices that are going to form from the flow separation is less it is expected to be less for a higher aspect ratio wing than for a lower aspect ratio wing okay now all this of about if uh, what if i had a higher aspect ratio how things are going to work how there is a flow that is going to be separated or how what is it form right and also in comparison to what if i had a low aspect ratio another effect of changing the aspect ratio is changing in the stall angle okay so this is some uh, effect of the aspect ratio on the wing we we see here uh, uh, some aspect ratio values are been given for different of different type of aircraft right Let's just see. So all these things are going to be useful when we are going to calculate the problems on uh, how we are going to select an airfoil or how we are going to uh, uh, design a wing. Okay. And then, the, for a home built, for a home built, uh, uh, the equivalent aspect ratio is given to be six. If a question is given in terms of a general aviation single engine, it is seven point six. For a twin engine, it is going to be seven point eight. For agricultural aircraft, it is seven point five. For twin turboprop, it is nine point two. For a flying boat, it is eight point zero. So mostly we are going to do problems on our twin turboprop, right? 
Then for jet aircraft, again for jet aircraft, for jet trainer, A and C values are given here. Okay. Then next is the wind speed, right? Now wind sweep is used primarily to reduce the adverse effect on the transonic and supersonic wave. Right? So that is what wind speed is used basically. And the water the shock formation on the swept wing is determined not by the velocity of the air, but rather by the air velocity in the direction that is going to be perpendicular to the leading edge of the wind. And next the taper ratio. Taper ratio is the ratio between the cord and its center line uh, root cord. Okay. Uh, between a tip cord and a center line root cord and most of the wings of the low sweep have a taper ratio of 0 0.4 to 0.5 and uh, swept wings will have a taper ratio of 0 0.2 to 0 0.3. Now this taper affects the uh, distribution of lift along the complete span of the wing. Right? The minimum drag due to lift or induced drag occurs when the lift is distributed in an elliptical fashion. Right? If I had elliptical wing then that is how it is going to be distributed. Next is wing twist. Now wing twist is used. Uh, I, I, I want to utilize this wing twist in order to prevent the tip stall. Right? Stall itself is not good for me. So if I want to prevent the tip stall then uh, let me make use of the wing twist here and to revise the lift distribution to approximate an ellipse. Okay. So wings are twisted between 0 and 5 degrees here. Now again we have two different types of twist. One is geometric twist. The other one is the aerodynamic twist. Geometric twist is the Actual change in the airfoil angle of incidence usually measured with respect to the root airfoil. Right? So that is a geometric twist which is the change in the uh, airfoil angle of incidence. Then we also have something called aerodynamic twist. Aerodynamic twist is the angle between the zero lift angle of an airfoil and the zero lift angle of a root airfoil. Okay. If the identical airfoil is used from the root to tip, the aerodynamic twist and the geometric twist both are similar. Both are same. Right? And then a wing with a no geometric twist can have an aerodynamic twist. Right? So example is shown here. A root aerofoil is symmetric. Root aerofoil is symmetric means the zero lift angle is zero. But the tip aerofoil is highly cambered. Right? Zero lift angle is non-zero. The total wing aerodynamic twist equals the wing geometric twist plus the root airfoil zero lift angle minus the tip airfoil zero lift angle. Then next we have wing incidence. Then the wing incidence is the pitch angle of the wing with respect to the fuselage. Now if your wing is untwisted, right now what happens if my wing is untwisted? The incidence is simply the angle between the fuselage axis and the wing airfoil's cord length, right? If your wing is untwisted, then we could say simply that is the angle between the fuselage axis and also the wing airfoil's cord lines. Now if the wing is twisted, the incidence is defined with respect to some arbitrarily chosen spanwise location, usually the root of it, okay? So that means my overall wing incidence angle is chosen to minimize the drag. At the end, what is it I am um, obtaining for? I want to have a, a higher lift and a drag to be a minimum. Uh, then only then I could be able to say that yes, it's a good, uh, good, uh, uh, a good design, right? So wing incidence angle is chosen to minimize the drag at operating condition. You generally at a cruise cruise stage. The next are wing tips. Now, wind tips shape have two effects upon subsonic aerodynamic performance, right? The tip shape affects the aircraft wetter area, but only to a smaller extent, right? Now, the important effect is the influence the tip shape has upon the lateral spacing of the tip vortices. Now, this is determined by the higher pressure air on the bottom of the wing, which can escape around the tip from the top of the wing. A tip with a sharp edge, if I had a very sharp edge, then it would make me more difficult, thus it would reduce the induced drag. Then most of the new low drag will tip through some form of the sharp edges. I would have a, a sharp edges. So simple cut off tip offers a lesser drag than a, a round off tip due to the sharp edges where the upper and lower surfaces are. So these are few wing tips we can see. Now some of the wing tips have been displayed here, taken from the Rema textbook. So a rounded one, a rounded one, then we have a sharp edge one, then we have a cut off shaped one, then we have a horner one, a drooped one, right? A drooped is, is more likely in this way, right? Then an upswift one, right? We have an upswift, then we have an aft swift, then we have a mac cone, or we have a cut off forward swift, swift, 
then we have a end plate over there then we have a wing webs right so these are the different uh, uh, wing tips uh, that can be classified so all that we are saying is with respect to the wing i would want initial gross weight we have seen how a initial gross weight can be attained we have solved some numericals on this or three or four numericals we have solved how to how to calculate the takeoff uh, weight right by by having a particular data or particular machine profile right then then once you know how to calculate that estimated takeoff weight or gross weight or anything the fuel weight if you are able to calculate all those fuel weight empty weights and all then it's about the airfoil and its characteristics and its shape that means what uh, what is that i am looking for what is my design what are my requirements what am i expecting from it so accordingly i go and choose the uh, airfoil or i select the airfoil i design the airfoil accordingly right then a point where your airfoil can have a mat point, right? And also, how stall angle is going to be affected because of the shape of the airfoil. Now, uh, the shape of the airfoil uh, would design uh, how much I'm going to be stalled, right? Stall angle. Then, camber max to get a CL maximum, right? All I'm looking for is uh, to obtain a maximum lift coefficient. Then, uh, camber airfoil are used to increase the CL max, but then again, again, if I had an advantage in it, I also have a disadvantage of it. The disadvantage is my CMAC is going to be negative. Now, this need to be handled properly and then you try to balance the aircraft and get a CL maximum. Right? So, that is what designer has to do. Then, we also said that aspect ratio about different higher aspect ratio, lower aspect ratio, then that means my aspect ratio also plays an important role here. As aspect ratio increases, I have stall angle that is going to reduce because of the downwards it is going to reduce, right? So for a given S, your aspect ratio increases, your V increases. If my aspect ratio increases, only then I should be able to say that LYD increases, right? Now, if I consider a particular example, right? I know from the left equation L is equal to half rho V square SCL, right? So I am expecting for a left to be maximum or CL to be maximum here. Right. So, if I am going to fix the S, then what is that I have to decide for? I have to decide for the attitudes, velocities, that means the speed of it, then the CL of it. Right. If a S is duly fixed already, then I have to check at what altitude my aircraft should fly. Right. And what is the speed that I need to cruise or climb or whatever, then do I get a maximum CL for it? Then my drag is going to be of two forms, a parasite drag and induced drag, right? Now, if your drag, induced drag can be decreased as it's induced by the lift, then lift can be increased. I am I am looking for a, a lift to increase, right? I want lift to increase, therefore, I could say that CL is going to be increased. Now, in order for my lift to be increased, I could rather decrease this induced drag, right? Because it's going to be induced by the lift, right? Then I could enhance the lift of it. Then drag is again proportional to V square. Right? So therefore, for a given as V increases, that means obviously my induced drag is going to decrease. Now the relation between aspect ratio and induced drag here, right? So induced drag again is proportional to weight. We know that, right? Uh, v is equal to half rho V square S C D. Then if if W is more here, then Di is going to be more. It requires more CL, obviously. If V increases, then Di reduces. This comes from the formula. The formula goes like this, something like this. So we have formulas. We have formulas taken coming in this way, right? Then if my V is decreasing, then obviously I need to uh, get all of them to be downwards, right? If span increases, it will create many structural issues because if my span is too uh, too high, then what happens? I will have uh, structural uh, damages or any issues that will come in the structure, and it might. A tilt during a landing phase. Then the wing speed, wing speed also, we are just summarizing things here, right? For critical Mach number increases, I would say that my speed is going to increase. Now, again, when you say so, you are saying that you are claiming that a critical Mach number is going to increase, then I could say that my speed increases, right? Then, but again, my critical Mach number is again dependent on it is a function of speed, thickness to core ratio, and airfoil. Right? Now, 
when you take consider all of these things you are lift lift is some of lot of things except that my, we know that uh, wing is one which is going to produce the maximum amount of lift but apart from that lift of the aircraft is some of its wing tail canard and other things many other things right so but majority of the portion of the lift is going to be attained by the wing only right so if i need to fly such that uh, you get a maximum l by d right and also this particular thrust required to d also to be a minimum value so that that is about the wing uh, about wing speed wing aspect ratio wing twist and all right so next is the tail geometry and its arrangements tails are also little wings only here right so the major difference between a wing and tail is that wing is designed to carry a substantial amount of lift that is what we are going to design uh, we are going to give a wing to an aircraft right? because i want to attain a lift and tail is designed to operate normally at a fraction of its lift potential okay so these tails provide for trim stability and mostly a control of it okay so this trim again trim in a saying trim trim refers to the generation of a lift force by acting through a tail movement arm about its cg and its balancing the other movement that is going to be produced by the aircraft now i have a, for, a horizontal and aft uh, horizontal tail so for horizontal tail trim is uh, refers to the balancing of the movement that is going to be created by the wing then an aft horizontal tail has a negative incidence angle here about 2 to 3 degrees okay now as your wing is going to pitch as the wing as the wing pitching moment varies under different flight condition the horizontal tail incidence is usually adjustable right you can adjust it a little bit a 3 degrees up and down now now again in terms of a vertical tail for a vertical tail the generation of trim force is normally not required but it doesn't require because the aircraft is a light rod symmetric and does not create any yaw moment over there so it does not create any yaw moment so you really have much use of it the vertical moment of the uh, vertical tail of the multi uh, aircraft must be capable of providing sufficient trim force in uh, that that is in the case of uh, engine, engine failures next are tail arrangement so some of the arrangements are been displayed here okay so the first one is a conventional uh, that is a simple one right so this is a conventional tail a simple one showing here this again has been taken from the ring up then we have head tail right so head tail we can see here there is it yeah head tail head tail is used primarily to position the vertical tails in an undisturbed air during a high angle of attack conditions or you can position to the radars in the pro wash on a multi engine aircraft to enhance the engine of control right so the head tail is heavier Than the conventional tail, so my head tail is going to be a much more heavy. The next is twin tails. Twin tails, right? So this is a twin tail. Now for a twin tail on a fuselage, it can position the radars away from the aircraft center line, which may be blanketed by the wing or a forward fuselage at the higher angles of attack. Then also the twin tails have been used to reduce the height required with a single tail. Then a T tail. We have a T tail here, right? So this is the T tail. Now in the T tail, a T tail requires a wing that is going to be designed to avoid the pitch up without a horizontal tail. We we'll just see again a T tail, right? So this is my T tail here. So T tail requires a wing designed to avoid pitch up, right? So this requires an aircraft stable enough to recover from the stall. It has to, it has to recover that uh, stall angle or the stall. Okay, even when the tail is being blanketed by a wing. Now several general aviation aircraft uses this approach, which has the added benefit of a positive warning to the pilot caused by buffeting on the tails. Then canards, canards, uh, uh, canards are being used by the Wright brothers, but. Uh, they have been stopped because they have a difficulty of providing the enough stability that the aircraft has to possess right so the early right airplanes were in fact unstable if i cannot keep the aircraft in a stable way then then what are the designer has been worked on uh, it wouldn't uh, do much of an effort right so therefore uh, whatever the early early right uh, airplanes were quite unstable and required a well trained pilot 
कपड़े सो राइट कनेक्ट बीन कंटिन्यूसली मैनिपुलेटेड दे बीन मैनिपुलेटेड ऑलमोस्ट फुल अप एंड फुल डाउन एज ए पायलट रिस्पॉन्स टू द गस्ट अ थ्री सर्फेस अरेंजमेंट प्रोवाइड्स बोथ एक्टिव एंड लिफ्टिंग कनेक्ट सर्फेस Then a canard or an after tail, right? A canard or after tail when generating lift for trim trim purposes will change the aircraft. It is going to change the aircraft total lift distribution, which will increase the DI, which is induced drag, right? On a three surface configuration, the canard and after tail can act as opposite directions, right? Which will cancel out each other. Then the tail geometry. The surface area is required for all the types of tails are directly proportional to its uh, wing area, right? So the tail areas cannot be selected until Until and unless you make out that uh, initial estimates, whatever we have done the previous problem, right? So you need to calculate all your uh, take off gross weight. Only then I should be able to do this calculation. Other geometric parameters for the tails can be selected at this time. Tail aspect ratio and tail ratio shows a little variation over a wide range of aircraft types. T tail aircraft have a lower vertical tail to reduce. It is going to reduce the weight impact. Then tail thickness ratio is usually similar to the wing thickness ratio determined by the guidelines provided in the wing geometry section. So horizontal tail, vertical tail for different types has been shown here. For a fighter, for a sailplane, for the others also been shown. For a T tail, it is shown here for the vertical tail. Okay. Then we have finally thrust to weight ratio. Right, okay, thrust to weight ratio and wing loading. The thrust to weight ratio and the wing loading are the two most important parameters that are going to affect the aircraft performance, right? So optimization of these parameters form a major part of the critical design activities conducted after an initial design layout, right? You need to make so while I'm calculating the initial estimates of an aircraft, whether in terms of its gross weight or fuel weight or empty weight, whatever so I'm doing, I have to make sure that every at every stage of it, I optimize things so that it would be a better one. Okay, so the critical estimates of the wing loading and thrust to weight ratio being made before before you start to begin it, right? So otherwise, the optimized aircraft may be so unlike the aircraft drawn, the design must be completely read. Otherwise, you need to just keep on repeating it until you get that uh, optimized uh, values or figures that you are expecting for. This uh, this is going to affect the directly the performance of the aircraft, right? An aircraft with a higher thrust to weight ratio will accelerate more quickly. Climb more rapidly and reach a maximum speed and sustain high turn rates. Right, so because my uh, thrust to weight, I have a higher thrust, so I could accelerate more. I could climb more. I could have a maximum of V here. Right, so larger engines will consume more fuel throughout the mission, which will drive up the aircraft gross weight to perform the design mission. So it is very important to avoid the take off thrust to weight with. Take off uh, uh, with the other thrust to weight, other conditions, right? So because take off uh, at during take off it is uh, different, and uh, during other conditions is going to be different. So you need to adjust these calculations properly. Thrust matching. So the last is uh, for uh, thrust matching for aircraft design primarily for efficiency during cruise. A better initial estimates of required T by W can be obtained, right? So this refers to the comparison of the Engine thrust that is going to be available during the cruise, right? So in a level unaccelerating flight, for an unaccelerating flight, T is equal to D, uh, like we know L equal to W, right? Assuming that thrust is aligned with the flight path. So T by W must be equal to inverse of L by D. L by D can be estimated in various ways, uh, in various ways, right? So therefore, I have to in order for me to estimate. The take off gross weight. I need to make sure that I do my conceptual design properly. I understand the requirements of the customer. I go and select a proper airfoil or in terms of wings or a tail or fuelages or whatever, right? So we calculate very well. Only then a better outcome is going to be expected. Okay. So so this ends with the first module. So in the first module we have seen. all the calculations or what is a design and how we have uh, classified the design into three different uh, types uh, three different uh, designs right preliminary stage and uh, conceptual stage and detail stage and in the conceptual stage uh, is all about we're talking about the entire flight vehicle design right then we have seen about uh, some selection of the airfoil selection of wing selection of the tail and we have also done few calculations right few numerical spacing on the 
uh, estimations of the gross fit and you could also do uh, problems problems based on uh, the selection of the airfoil how an airfoil is selected or designed we could do that this probably you're going to do it in the lab flight vehicle design lab and also same goes with respect to the wing or plate all those things can be clearly followed up in the lab because uh, we would be taking all the parameters considering all exact aspect ratio or incidence angle its twist rate its sweep and all we take all the parameters precisely according to the uh, problem statement and we go and come up with the airfoil or we come up with that selected airfoil which is best for that uh, particular design right so this ends with the first module thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates